All right, folks, thank, thank you for coming. We've got some special guests, and I'm going to introduce those guys, these incredible men of God to you in just a minute. But if we, if we could, let's pray. Let's open this time. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love. We thank you most of all for your presence, that you are truly an ever-present help in time of need. So you are welcome, Holy Spirit of the living God. I ask you to speak to our hearts directly. Speak to us, speak through us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we've got a couple of people here that I think uh, that I love, and I, I'll kind of give you how this come together, is I get to have great conversations with great men very, very often. And my thought was, we need to bring some of these conversations out here and talk about some of the things that we talk about. And there were some things on my heart concerning 2020 and 2021 and the future of the church and the direction of our nation and some other things. So they're going to get sideswiped because I gave them a bunch of questions and we've got totally different questions. So this yes. is good. No, I'm kidding. Kind of, kind of. We have with us um, Kyle, Se- Kyle Seeger. He is the senior pastor of Calvary Fellowship Fayetteville. He is... He is um, incredibly committed husband and father, powerful man of God. I believe that God is going to use him to speak well into the next generation. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Kyle. He, a uh, good friend of mine, um, work, with, work out with him at the gym. He's got like big arms and comes in looking all buff, making me look bad. But I'll, I'll just go on to the next gentleman that we have with us. <laughs> Equally physically as menacing and imposing, um, this is Mr. Fallon Proctor. He is, now correct me if I'm wrong, let's see, pastor, principal, father, husband, and you and your wife are the national or state coordinators for the National Day of Prayer, or you have been. Are you still in that role? Still are. All right, let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you both for coming. And this is the one, the only, the man, the myth, Pastor All, Jeff Hoagland. Also, also very buff. Yeah, also. <laughs> Back in the day. 18 one, centimeter pythons. Seven. Come on now. Okay, Come anyway. On. So what Amen. we got, Jeff is going to kind of mediate with us and talk us through some things. Amen. I, I'm going to kind of facilitate this, uh, this discussion, but Pastor Tony wrote all the questions, so he's kind of cheating. Oh, um, we're in trouble. Anyways, he's... He started it off with, with a scripture. It's Proverbs 27, 12. And it says this, The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and, they, and pay the penalty. So you guys ready for the first question? Looking back to 2020, oh my, 2020, what was one of your most valuable lessons that you learned? Um. Start with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate that we started this with a proverb uh, because we know that proverbs obviously are the maxims for life. They, they show us wisdom. They give us understanding. They give us insight. And so I think, I think looking back at 2020, uh, the need for wisdom, the need for godly counsel, the need for um, like-minded individuals to shed light on things, to give leadership insight, to give practical insight, to, to kind of help steer the ship because we were navigating uncharted waters this 2020 as a as local churches obviously my context local church and so um yeah i think wisdom and and counsel valuable lesson something i want to share with you about about kyle is that correct me if i'm wrong he had taken the senior pastor position approximately nine months before covid hit yeah august 2019 yeah i want you to think about that Guys, I, I've been doing this for a minute, and it was the most difficult thing that I have ever had to nav- navigate as, you know, as a pastor. And to see him take this position, and that's your first pastorate, correct? Yep. So, so think about the, the resolve that he must have had. Think about the support that he had to have and the trials that he's faced. Navigating these things for the very first time, I'll be honest with you, we kind of bonded through that adversity. Um, so it just, it just amazes me that he is still standing and thriving as a result of that. So it's a testament. Amen. Yeah, a testament. Praise wonderful, Lord. wonderful answer. One of the things that 2020 taught me and really gave me an opportunity to take and, and really submit my vision unto God. 2020 was a year that showed us, regardless of how good our plans were, our plans really were nothing compared to what God had in store for us. Mm. And, and so it really gave an opportunity. I think 2020, as Pastor Tony and I have shared, was a year of exposure. 
It was a year of exposure. We started the year off saying it was a year supposedly of perfect vision, but it really was a year of exposure because one of the great things about exposure gives you an opportunity to shine the light on yourself. And any of us who found ourselves in 2020 still trying to operate in your own plan after March actually came upon us, you quickly realized that the greatest thing to do was to take your hands off the steering wheel and allow God to do what God wanted to do. So it was a year of exposure right, right, for yeah. me. The, um, I would have to say one of the greatest lessons that, that I learned personally was the power of the pivot. Um, the ability to, and also the power of purpose. Anytime that you have to pivot, the purpose never changes. Like for us, we have, a, we have something that we do here. We have a mission statement. We, are, we exist to make, equip, and release fully equipped or fully committed followers of Jesus. No matter how much we pivot, that purpose kept us rooted, even though we had to do things in very, very different ways. But the power of the pivot and flexibility some of the greatest lessons. And, 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 and out of that, it just proves God's not surprised. He's never surprised about the mess that you encounter. Even though you may not be prepared, he's not surprised. And we can find great solace in that. Very often, and I, I made this, this statement a couple weeks ago. I said, 2020 was not good to me, but it was good for me. Yes. There are things, and I've shared yes. this with them openly, there are things that we would not have done as a church body for years to come had we not been pressed by 2020 to go ahead and expedite expedite those things and to see people rise to the occasion. I dare say we may not have these relationships, certainly not in their, in their current capacity, had it not been for 2020. Um, so those valuable lessons, the power of the pivot, being absolutely flexible and trusting in the sovereignty of God and doubling down in the mission. When it gets volatile, it's not the time to forsake the mission is to re-examine the application of the mission. Mm, so that, that was... Um, I want to kind of tag off of that, the, the power of the pivot. You know, 2020, we are cruising along, we're doing our thing, and again, we, we, we make plans, and, and God laughs sometimes, and, yeah. and, um, and here we are, and, uh, you know, we're, we're cruising in uh, 2019 into 2020 and you know we're just ready to charge the gates of hell with a water pistol and um ready to do great things for the kingdom and then and, and then covid happens and um when we speak of pivoting what was a, a major pivot that you guys have had to take a, along the way yeah i think um when I hear pivot, I also hear adaptability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think, I think when we're pivoting, we're able to be adaptive. And I think that's what at CCFA, Calvary Chapel of Fayetteville, we, we had to become adaptive. We never had an online service before. They didn't do online service uh, before August 2019. And then all of a sudden, hey, we should really start looking at online services. We probably should look at some tech and types of things. And so I think, I think pivoting, being, being adaptive was, was, was an awesome thing for us. And, and we did it. And the Lord blessed it. The Lord used it. The Lord glorified his name through um, You know, I think uh, in what, are you passing that to me? Yeah, yeah, if okay. you would, please. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I think uh, there, is a, there is a false sense of spirituality when we as believers just say, hey, I'm going to trust the sovereignty of God. Absolutely, yes and amen. Trust the sovereignty of God. But it is God who's working in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so if, if he's going to use you in any particular context, he actually might be wanting you to be more proactive mm -hmm. than reactionary or, or doing nothing and just saying, well, we're going to trust the sovereignty of God and see what happens. Well, maybe the Lord is going to use you. Maybe the Lord is going to propel you forward to do something pretty awesome that you weren't doing before. Maybe the pivot, maybe being adaptable so that he could receive all the more glory from that from that instance and so yeah being adaptive and, and being proactive mm -hmm. so I, I hear a wineskin sermon coming up y'all hear that <laughs> <clears throat> sorry <laughs> so, uh, Pastor Proctor absolutely one, one of the great things and when I hear pivot I think about fluidity uh, 2020 taught us to be fluid mm. be very fluid be fluid have the openness not only to be fluid but to really consider something when we consider the scripture and think about the conversation when Jesus said to the fishermen, go back out and cast your, 
fish on the other side, the net on the other side to fish. The fisherman was already in the right position. The problem was his positioning needed to change so he can see what was already there. Sometimes we get so focused on other things, we miss what's already present for us. And so 2020 in the pivot, it caused us, for example, to look across the street. Mm. Mm. Some of us would drive by places that we wouldn't normally look at. We would go to places that we wouldn't normally see people. But in 2020, it caused us when they said go in and close the door, shut up, caused us to go in the house, shut the door, be quiet, and really take an evaluation and start to look at some things that in our rush we were missing. So I think the pivot also provided us with an opportunity, and there's a good word for us to consider, opportunity. Mm -hmm. While many of us looked at the crisis, what we discovered was there's no crisis in Christ. Mm. It was an opportunity. So opportunity for a greater covenant. Opportunity of 2021 presents us with a challenge as 2020 did. We are already in covenant relationship, which is what the fishermen had, if you consider it, when he said to the fisherman to pivot, the fisherman, when the blessing started to overwhelm him and his ship began to go down, the fisherman had the opportunity not to look far for covenant. He had already established covenant. So when the blessings came in, all he had to do was look to his right and say, come on, guys, join me. We're now in a place because of our pivot that there's enough for all of us. And so I think about the pivot, what the pivot did it made us do ministry with the true purpose. It's what it really did for us. It made us do ministry with a true yeah. purpose. That's good. I'm stealing yeah. all those um, items there, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> we write, I heard a guy say it this way. He said, while the, while the pessimist and the optimist were arguing over whether the glass was half full or half empty, the opportunist, opportunist drank the glass. Yes. <laughs> he, he drank the water. And, you know, and that's kind of what we have to do is, is seize, seize that moment. And it did present a lot of opportunities. Some, some made it, took advantage of those opportunities. Again, you went from no online presence to an online presence, as a lot of churches did. Um, and, and take an opportunity for the personal introspective look and then helps you see outwardly totally different. And I think that kind of has a little bit to do with maybe the next, the next thing that we're talking about. Yeah. So uh, looking forward, going, well, we're here, here. We're, we're here. 2021 already. What do you see as your greatest challenge for, for this year? So um, yesterday I was up in Lynchburg, Virginia with about 12 other Calvary Chapel pastors. It's one of our regional summit pastor huddle thing that we call it. And um, one brother's heart was to really seek the Lord for relaunching in 2021. How can we as a local church relaunch into the community from everything we went through in 2020? And how are we going to do ministry? How are we going to do evangelism? How are we going to reach in this 2021? Um, and so I think a challenge, and I agree with him, I think a challenge is how are we relaunching? How are we going to rejuvenate a vision uh, and get out there to, to go and, and make disciples and, and baptize them in the name of the Lord? So, yeah, I think relaunching in, in 2021 and, and navigating what that's going to look like is going to be a challenge because I don't think we can uh, just go through 2021 thinking that 2020 didn't happen. And, and the things that we face, the things that we endured, the lessons we learned have to be applicable now to 2021 and, and just seeing how the Lord might use that um, to, to relaunch the church, to do something really, really incredible in 2021. Yeah. Awesome. I, I believe 2021 truly is an opportunity. I can't really say challenge, mm -hmm. uh, honestly. 2021, I believe, is an opportunity for us not to go back. The challenge, I guess, if we look for a challenge, it would be in not falling back into old habits. Mm, that's good. Mm. The exposure gave us an opportunity, and I, and I had to ponder this. Pastor Tony, as we shared, I considered if Christ was to show up in our church, would he recognize it? Because of what we've done to church. We've made church more man-centered than God-centered. So the greatest challenge is, is with the opportunity that's been presented to, to just blow the walls out and do things differently is not to fall back into the old habits and the old patterns and to keep pushing, 
keep pushing people to move beyond their fear to grow their faith. So that, that's the greatest challenge. The greatest challenge is on all of us, I believe, individually and collectively. Individually, hold one another accountable whenever it looks like we're trying to go back to the old patterns. Remember, he allowed some stuff to happen. He gives us what we need, not so much what we wanted. He gave us what we need. Let's expose the hearts. Are the hearts really ripened? We say people are welcome to church, but do we make church about us and our social cliques that those who we're trying to reach do not necessarily feel welcome? It, it, it does something differently. So now that it has happened, the big challenge, don't go back to what we were doing before. Don't go back to being so busy that we do not commune one with another. I believe it gave us an opportunity to commune with one another. It gave us an opportunity to covenant with one another. If we go back to the same old comforts of the past, we'll lose the momentum of what we're gaining. Greatest challenge, I think, me personally, is to keep the television off. Mm. Amen. Keep the television off. Keep people of God from watching CNN. Come on. From Come watching on. Fox. Amen. And, and, and to, to watch the word. Amen. So that's it for me. If I could add, if I could add something to that, I think, and you, you hit it uh, with communion and covenant. I think, I think a challenge um, for 2021 will be the challenge of greater commitment in the local church. Um, we've gone through so much in 2020, so many opportunities for division. Uh, you can work so hard at building unity. It takes one little thing, one little tweet, one little thing to completely destroy it. And so unity is a very sensitive, it takes, it takes a lot of work to build and it, it just takes no time to completely destroy it. And so I think gardening greater commitment from the local churches to their local church. This is how I, as a congregant, as a member, whatever you call it here at Rockfish or where you're at, brother, how can we be committed in a greater way towards one another in 2021 with all of its now stuff with what COVID has done and, and everything else? And so, yeah, gardening greater commitment from the local churches to their local church. One of the, one of the questions that I reserved for the next panel that's going to happen in two weeks was, how important do you consider, I'm not necessarily asking now, but how important do you consider connectivity? And I think connectivity among us, among us, among the body of Christ is going to become paramount. The reason I say that is because one of the greatest challenges that I believe that we're going to face is, is recapturing or regaining our voice in, in, in the community. And when I say our voice, I mean the voice of the church. We've allowed our voice or who we are and what we are to be redefined by our culture. If we do not recapture our voice in the community, we're never going to have it exposed to the country and it's never going to effectively affect the culture. So, so how do we recapture, and when I, when I say recapture the voice, the platform from which we're able to speak in, used to, if, if you had a panel and you had a discussion, you would put you would put a pastor up there. You would put a lawyer up there. You would put a doctor up there. Uh, now, those are the three people you can't trust the, mo the most in our culture. There's questions about the scientists. There's questions about the pastors. You never really trusted a lawyer, but you, you, you see my point. How do we legitimately recapture the voice and, and, and define what the voice of the church is in the community? Because I believe if we can effectively reach the community now, because we're back at ground zero, we're back. I want to share a statistic with, with you guys and when with, with everyone here. I shared it with a, a good friend of mine came in today. 55% of the people who left church because of COVID, you know, about 90% of the church is shut down. 55% of the people who left for COVID no longer attend online or in purpose or in person and are not in church at all. They are completely void of the influence or the connectivity of the body of Christ. Listen to this. We have experienced the great falling away. Let me just say we've experienced a great falling away. Could it coincide? These are, in, in my mind, these are very sobering times. I, I, I put nothing beyond the pale of, of, of possibility. That, that's a question for two weeks, Pastor. You can't ask us that tonight. We didn't discuss that. He just threw That's it out there. Two right? weeks. <laughs> threw that out. So, well, I, it's a good question, but I, it, it's a good question. It's a good question. And, and since I'm out here, I'll take the leap for us right now. But it's a good question to consider when we consider that. How do we recapture? How do we 
move to that point. I guess in order to say that, we would have to believe that we have totally lost. We have totally lost. And sometimes I think because we may not see in the contextualization of what we're seeing here tonight, everyone back inside of the building. We may not see that. We may not see churches packing in the manner in which we were accustomed to. Remember what I said, the challenge was not to go back to what we were doing before. The, the Acts church describes smaller churches. Smaller churches. They were going from house to house, smaller churches, cell groups, doing those things. It may be that is not necessarily recapturing, but redefining mm -hmm. with the same purpose, but redefining how we're going to effectively meet people where they are. So it's not recapturing. To recapture, in my mind, would, would be us going back to try to recapture the good old days of what we did. And, and there is a season for everything. There's a season. We know that as biblical people, biblical scholars, there's a season for everything. And that dispensation, perhaps, for the moment, that dispensation may have passed us for a season. So we may not need to recapture as much as redirect well, I kind and of redefine, feel, rather. I kind of feel as if we lost the voice in the community well before COVID. I'm just going to be honest I would, with you. I would agree. I think From that, that perspective, I would agree. Yeah, I, so, I would, so, I agree. So, so to reestablish yeah. the validity and the need, and I'll be honest with you, I think COVID has made it very, very clear, and a lot of other things has made it very, very clear that the world outside of Jesus Christ does not have the answer. So I believe even through this, God's created the platform. How do we leverage it? Yeah, I think, I think Jesus was, was explicitly clear when Peter made his confession, the gates of hell will not prevail against her, speaking about the church. So, so regardless of what's going on in society, culture, viruses, politi what, political stuff, like the, the church will continue to prevail. The church will continue to go forward. It's the only organization that Jesus himself has ever blessed. When I say church, I mean the local assembly of the believers gathered under eldership and governance, all these types of things that we describe as the local church. And so I think um, to, to answer your question, Pastor Tony, I think really going back to a, or doing a just meat and potato style of church, being content with the word and prayer, being content with gathering even in this way and being, wow, thankful that we can actually have our Bibles open and hearing the word of God taught to us and having a hunger again just for the essentials or the foundations of our very faith, um, the word and prayer. And so, um, yeah, and I, and I, you know, I, I don't think we have lost. I don't think we have failed. I don't think, uh, I don't think that's true at all because Jesus Christ has blessed his church. Jesus Christ has given us the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ has given us his very word. Uh, so there's nothing that we are, are without. Uh, and there's nothing, there's nothing that we don't have power to do in because he's given us that. And so, um, I think 2021 is going to be a phenomenal year for the local church to do that very thing, to glorify God in our, in our congregations. I, have, I yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I, I heard yeah. to speak directly to what you're both saying there. I heard Greg Shell say it this way, and, and this has kind of been a motto that, that Life Church has adopted, and I, I heard him say the phrase, and when he first said it, I was like, huh, it's kind of weird, but I'm going to say it out loud because it talks to not returning to the old. It talks to seizing the opportunity making the most of the platform, he said, he said, we will do whatever it takes short of sin to bring people to Jesus Christ. Now you're, and when I first heard that, I was like, okay. So we're talking about a, a wholesale commitment to the commission, and there's no effective way other than the old school way. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the power of God into salvation. Now, whether our culture has a toleration for that or not, is inconsequential, inconsequential. The power of the gospel is still there, still prevalent, yeah. And I, and I think if, if his church is hungry for revival and awakening, not to happen in Washington, not to happen in Fayetteville, but to happen in the local church, Amen. could you imagine the Holy Spirit being poured out again on the local church? I mean, it would be incredible. It, revival would start with us. Um, and I think that's, that's, what, that's what I'm longing for to see in 2021 is, is genuine revival in the church. And I think you said it, brother, before. I, I think... Man, asking ourselves as pastor leaders, asking ourselves as shepherds, asking ourselves as congregants and members of the local church, are we going to church 
for what we can get, mm. or are we going to church to see how God is glorified? And I think we have to get back to that. It's not about the program. It's not about the planning. It's not about any of this stuff. It's The question is, is God getting the glory from that local church? And if God is not getting the glory from that local church, then why in the world is that church existing? Mm. But if that church is existing for the glory of God, there's nothing that that church cannot do, nor witness can that church not have in the community to absolutely platform the gospel, his word, word in his holy name. Amen. Four pastors, four mics, 30 minutes. Go. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Lord. Now I'm just sitting here going back and forth, man. I might need a little chiropractic work here uh, later on. I love this conversation. Guys. Yeah, it's good stuff. I yeah. Agree. Yeah. And I'm, I'm totally in agreement with what everyone else has said, man. I said, you know, uh, someone said that the, some of the, the churches you know, over 2020, because of the situations, is closed. The, the lowercase C church may close, but the capital C church will live till Amen. Jesus comes back. Come it on, will prevail. And um, so, but, praise but real God. quick and, though, but real quick, because I've heard that a lot in conversations. Okay, um, the church must assemble. The church must assemble. So, so maybe we don't have our buildings, maybe we don't have all of our, our programming, but the church must assemble. That's the connectivity so, question. 100%. Absolutely. And so if that's assembling in homes, because that's how, that's how you have to adapt, praise God, assemble in the homes. If you can still assemble in the building, praise God, assemble in the building. But the, the, but the Little C Church, the local congregation must assemble. Church is absolutely essential, and it must assemble. Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe in, you know, the micro church, house church, community church, the mega church. I, I don't believe that there's one is better than the other. I believe that God works within all. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm thankful for all and praise God. You're for looking all. at about the four most pro church people you're going to find. It is, is God's plan. A, I don't know that there's a plan B. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like what you said. It's, it's not, and we have a tendency. It, you never despise small beginnings. I, I remember going to a conference years ago and, and a, a, Somebody come out at the very beginning of the conference and they challenged all of these pastors at this massive gathering. And they said, what if God has called you to be the pastor of that church that never goes beyond 12? Will you do it? It got quiet. We were at the largest church in the United States at the time having the conference. And it was like, uh, you really have to do that hard check. Why do you do what you do? If we're called to make disciples, some are called to make 3,000, some are called to make three. They're not our disciples, there's Christ, they're Christ's disciples. But is your commitment the same if the call is not? So, And I think, I think 2020 has, has, has refined and purified that very motive amen. For, for the pastorate. And I think uh, the brother pastor that's out there now shepherding a, a smaller church, um, he might be rejoicing that he has a smaller church. Amen. To be honest, like, <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, and, that, and praise God for that. And the brother has a larger church. I mean, it, it, yeah, you're absolutely right, Pastor Tony. That the, it's not about the number; it's about the faithfulness. And so, yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's let's move on to another question, guys. We're let's talk about um, let's see some advice that you would give. Looking forward again into 2021. What advice would you give? For, for the church as a whole? I would say we're, we're teaching right now, we're sharing. One of the things we're discussing is the glory of God. Welcoming God's glory back into God's church. In order for the power to be restored to the church, we have to have God's glory in the church. Mm. We, we have gotten to a place to where it's almost as if God's glory is not welcome. We, we want God's glory to be back in the church, the manifestation yes. of his glory in the church. No glory, no power. No power, we're just having social gatherings. So give us an opportunity to start welcoming God's glory back into God's church. As individuals, as Pastor Tony said, thank God for where you are, not despising where you are. Where you are is a place we've been planted. Being planted there is a great opportunity for us to blossom. Scripture says, faithful over a few, he'll trust us with more. It's really what he says. And so I believe this is a great opportunity in 2021. Let go of the past. 
celebrate what we have for the future. God's hope is still available to us. We haven't lost hope. Our hope is still there. The problem is, as we've been looking to the world, instead of us impacting the world, the world is impacting us. So my advice would be take our eyes off the world, put our eyes back on God. Mm, that's good. Good. Yeah, I can't, can't add much to that. Um, and I, I think faith, just being faithful. Faithful, um, faithful in the army if you're serving in the army. Faithful in your marriage. Faithful in your local church serving. Faithful to prayer. Faithful to read the word. Faithful to seek God for his glory alone. Uh, being, being found faithful this 2021. And let everything else just kind of figure itself out and, and, and be found faithful. Amen. Pastor yeah. Tony, want you jump in on that? Yeah, I, I think one of the, some of the biggest things, and I just talked to the staff about this. I believe that going into 2021, we must be more intentional than ever about preserving unity. Um, the fragmentation that the enemy has tried to create in our nation, in our culture, creating what the, I'll go King James on you, isms and schisms, but trying to create cultural divides and, and separations, the aggressive preservation of unity. Uh, two things that I want to touch on that. One, think about common. When we talk about community, we're speaking of a common unity. If there's one thing that's happened, these two brothers here, there may be slight variations in theological differences, but let, let me tell you, let me help you understand. They are sitting here because there's a clear cut unity con concerning the salvific matters of Jesus Christ, who he is, the son of the living God, what he has made possible. There is one way. Preserving that unity in leadership, preserving that unity in congregation, preserving that unity in our family, common unity. I believe that the common unity is also intricately tied to one other aspect, another word that we use and we don't like. It's called submission. I want you to think about the word submission. Sub and then mission. It means under mission. There's the mission aspect. We only focus on the sub, but when we, when we come under the mission of Christ, we walk in a greater unity than ever. We walk in a greater community, a common unity than ever when we submit or come under submission to Christ's mission. That's where we're unified because we're growing the body. And anytime we talk about growing the body, here's the reality. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than them. It's us. You talked about the power. You talked about the presence. Um, most of the people I talk to, if God's not there, I don't want to be there. Where there's no presence, there is, there is no power. That's, that's a truth. Um, that's a reality. And I believe what God has shaken is something that has become a, a putrid substitute for Christianity. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I love church. I am pro-church. But we have substituted a church service for Christianity. You understand, coming here, regardless of what happens in the context of this meeting, that is a part of Christianity, but it is not the totality or the fulfillment of Christianity. We must come together. There must be that common unity. We need that presence and power. But a church service is where you learn. It's where you are equipped. It's where you are encouraged. Let everyone come together and have an encouragement. But there's still a vast world of mission out there waiting for every one of us to engage in. And when we engage, when that common unity engages in that common mission, and I say it this way, until the Great Commission becomes a corporate conviction, it will remain unfulfilled. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing a resolve. Uh, I, the pastors that I talk to, not just these guys, some of the other ones, we, we have good relationship with a lot of local pastors. Their hearts are the same. We're not about posturing or trying to see who's got the biggest numbers or who can be a big muckety muck. I don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. When we go to, I, I used to go to, to church meetings and conferences and things, and people used to walk around. Let me explain something. In 2019, we were one of the fastest top 100 growing churches in America. Now churches are just trying to keep their doors open. We were this close to building another building just to accommodate the people. But I believe what we've experienced has been a Gideon moment. And I don't know if I've shared this with you guys. I, th I think I've shared it with, with my local congregation. Our level of attendance is lower than it's been in a long time. But our level of engagement is wide open. 
The people who are here are hungry for, for common unity and mission. Pastor Jenna, can I share a story? Amen. Please. Um, so I, I came here in August uh, 2019, and I kept getting this uh, number come across my phone, and it was Pastor Tony's phone number. And I'm like, why in the world does he keep calling me? I mean, I just got here, and here's this other pastor in town trying to, you know, compare apples and oranges and size, and I don't want, look, I'm, I just got here, I appreciate the prayer breakfast invite, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm not here to compare stuff, I, you know, whatever. And I, I called him out. Finally, I picked up my phone, and I said, hey, I, I think I just said, Tony, hey, Tony, um, you know, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not here, like, I don't, I don't know why you're calling me or continue to call me, but basically, leave me alone, you know? I just got here. I just landed. Stop stalking, Pastor and, Tony. And, and, he, and he said, no, I genuinely just want to know how you're doing because I absolutely care about you. And I'm like, of course, you're going to say that. Like, you know, I get it. You're a pastor. Yeah. You have great, you know, leadership. Cool. Awesome. Uh, but then I gave it a chance. I picked ah, up the phone. Keep I res- talking, because I want to hear this. Yeah, so you know, I, res- <laughs> I respond to text messages. We went out to lunch, and I began to genuinely see your pastor's heart, which is for everything he just said. He legitimately cares about the unity uh, in the body of Christ among pastors, agreeing absolutely on essentials, and where there are non-essentials, uh, there's, 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 there's charity. Um, and so, uh, I, again, brother, I, I think you're absolutely uh, genuine when you say that, and, and, and I appreciate that so much. So, oh, thank, anyway. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I have found that genuineness, just so you know, in these two gentlemen. I have had candid conversations. I've come to them with problems. They've come with, me to, with, with problems. We have had to lean on each other. When we say we need each other, we're better together. Guys, we're better together. The decision, the, the mistakes that I've made... Uh, Kyle's come to me. He, he asked me just recently about, a, about his, some input. And I said, brother, I've done it both ways and both were wrong. So good luck. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of what it looks like. And, and it's tough. You know, when the Bible says we're doubly judged, it means God judges us and every person in the congregation judges us as well. But I, I do want to say, I believe that that is a prevailing spirit, a move that God is doing. I'm happy to see Kyle in his position, position to carry that on. For, for a few more years. I mean, he's got to be, what, 15? You look like you're 16 or 17. Or yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. And, and same thing with, with, with uh, Pastor Proctor. Um, he has been out there in the community doing it, not just, and selflessly. His wife has been involved, seeing what, seeing what they've been doing. Um, I don't think they know the connection with our outreach. Talk to them. Well, guys, um, for those of you who attend Rockfish, um, Remember back for Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving outreach, we, we partnered with other local churches to feed 1,250 some families in, in various counties. And Pastor Proctor was the, the point guy in this. It, it, ten years, right? Has it been, how long have you been doing that? Six or seven years. Yeah. I, eight years. I was doing some Google stalking. Anybody ever do Google? I was Google stalking him earlier this evening because I was really looking you for some Google dirt stalk, on. You Google stalk. You Facebook stalk. stalk. Yeah. So yeah, I know. I, I, I text stalk. Anyway, I was and, and a W R A L thing come up and was talking about that, and I realized that they had been doing the distribution aspect of that for years to come. He said it earlier: consistency, faithfulness. The method or the message never changes. The method must change at times and that is the pivot that's the change that that we've seen so amen guys can i sneak in one more question with the one man that we have left as the the praise team or whoever comes up this is the one i wanted to hear this is the one they don't know about this is the one i really want to hear okay you ready you go first (laughs) all right here it is what is god saying to you well that's the whole question that's it that's it right there. Well, 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 and, and this is what I was telling you know, my congregation. What is God saying to you? I want to know. We want to know what God's saying to the pastor of Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Um, at CCFA, we, um, we go through the Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and we just started the book of Matthew, and uh, we just started chapter 2 last week. And um, the three kings, they come, to, they come to Jerusalem, or the supposed three kings. There's probably 14 of them that came, the wise men. And uh, they come into Jerusalem proclaiming, where is he born king of the Jews? And Herod, being insecure as he was, freaks out. 
And then it says, all of Jerusalem with him. And because of this message, because of this proclamation, he gathers who to himself? The scribes and the priests. And all of a sudden, the scribes and the priests begin to tell Herod about Micah 5 too. And so the scribes and the priests tell Herod, hey, yeah, they're right. They're looking for the, the Bethlehem star. They're looking for this Christ. They're right. They've come to Judea. They're looking for him. Um, but shouldn't it have been the priests? Shouldn't it have been the scribes that were telling Herod he's here? shouldn't it have been the ones who were acquainted most to sacred things that were telling about the sacred reality of the, of the incarnation? Mm. And so I think for me personally, being close to sacred things, being close to the word of God, being close to the local church, being close to prayer, do I, do I numb myself to that? Or do I still have a passion to go to God's word and to hear him speak to me through it? Um, Lord, I need to hear a word from you in Psalm 118. Lord, speak to me, please. Um, and so I think just having a, a, a non-numbness to sacred things, n- the reading of Scripture, no less. Mm, that's Love good. That. That's good. That's good. How do you follow that? <laughs> I'll lean forward and say this. And, and I have been uh, for about three weeks sharing with my congregation and some leaders and others. And I'll say this to us. I don't say this at the closing to in any way bring us down, but a reality. So you ask the question, what is the Lord saying? And the Lord said to me about two weeks ago that the church for the next decade was preparing to go through one of the greatest persecutions that we've seen. It's going to be a persecution like Peter when Peter was denying Christ before men. Greatest persecution that we're going to face. And and what the Lord said to me was that we must remain passionate, we must remain purposeful, and we, the church, must step out of the realm of pitting the church against the church. Mm. Mm. Let God be God and let his enemies be scattered. Let God be God and let his enemies be scattered. The church has been fighting against one another instead of the church standing together for one another. God is saying to us, go back to Matthew 6 and 33. Seek him first. And everything else will be added unto us. I hope I answered your question. Praise God. That was good. Praise the Lord, guys. Well, we've run just a couple minutes over. But, um, you know, uh, if you haven't heard, seen on the news, there, our country's in a little bit of something right now. And so before we go, I'm going to ask Pastor Tony if you just um, maybe say a quick prayer for our country and in the church, the body of Christ as a whole. Um, Persecution in the church is nothing new. It's happened. Persecution brings productivity. The word that God had given me, I shared earlier this week, was was fruitfulness. Persecution is a catalyst for productivity. When we are pressed, we press in. We don't run away. Father, we press into you right now. You said... If my people who are called by my name, God, we, we are your people. And Father God, we lift up, I lift up the churches. I lift up both these churches that are represented here tonight. And I ask you, Father, that your wisdom, that your power, your plans, your purposes, and your pursuits would be evident and obvious in their lives, in their congregations. Right now, Father, I just ask that you would bless them. Father, I lift up our nation and I ask, Father God, that you would, you would turn the volatility. We know you're sovereign. You know, we know, we understand that all things work after the counsel of your will. We, we understand that is absolutely inescapable. But, Father God, I ask you for mercy in this nation. I ask you, Father, that your hands would be upon the church, that the church would, that your bride would take that place that you've called us to occupy, that place of honor, that place of love and adoration for you, that you would be the pinnacle, the purpose 
the pursuit of our hearts that we would burn for you. Give us a hunger and a desire for you like never before. And Father, I lift up those in leadership of our nation. I pray for our governors, our senators, our representatives, our president, vice president, all of those, the elects. Father, I'm just asking you right now to have mercy, to draw them to you. You said when the godly rule, the people rejoice. God, I'm asking you for mercy. Revival in our government, Father God, in your hand to be obviously upon our nation. Give us wisdom. Knit our hearts together in unity and common unity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Thank you guys again. God bless you.